I've never seen a dehydrated Cajun <laughs> Trinity. The bell peppers, the onion, and the celery. So I started a recipe and put those three things together, and that was how we created Say Two Dried Trinity Mix. To date, we've sold about 40,000 jars of our Say Two. At the beginning of this year, I was talking to a chef, and we were talking about an authentic etouffee mix. He had a Cajun seasoning company, I had the dried vegetables. Together we talked about making a roux. Well, I started playing with making a blonde roux, a dry blonde roux, and it worked. So we played on that, we continued to tweak the recipe until we put it to market. About two months ago, I messed up a batch of roux. My roux got dark on me. Instead of a blonde, it turned to a peanut butter. I didn't catch it in time. So I started playing with that. When you thicken that up, it was a perfect stew. So what do you do when you make mistakes? You find the bright side, and now we've made say two stew. So today I'm gonna to demonstrate how that stew kit works. It's authentic. The only thing in the package is handmade, hand blended, all made right here in Lafayette. In South Louisiana, my grandma made a meatball stew. And as I worked on the recipe, that was in my head. That flavor, how can I get to that flavor in an easy to use kit? Well, we played with the recipe probably three months before we put it in our first package. And the whole concept behind Say Two has always been, don't sacrifice Cajun cooking, make it easy so people can cook Cajun. And that's the concept behind our stew kits. Authentic, good flavor, just like your grandma made it. Well, when I say my grandma, it tastes like my grandma, no. My grandma passed, I'm never going to get that flavor, but I'm going to get as close as I can, and I think it's close. And how long did it take grandma to make a stew? It would take grandma, when you're making a homemade roux and you're using a mixture of oil and flour, you know you got to toast that flour with that oil and get to that peanut butter chocolate. But what, what we're doing now is we're toasting that flour and we're rendering that roux basically before it gets in our back. Grandma's gonna scratch your pot for an hour to get that bitterness out of that flour. Oil, flour combined, scratch the pot. It's gonna smoke. She's gonna render that bitterness out of it. Well, as we make our homemade roux, we have made a pot that cooks the flour with 30 and 40 pounds of flour at a time, and we're rendering that flour. All this kit calls for is four cups of water, and four tablespoons of butter. We've already put our butter in there. Water or stock. If I'm gonna cook a shrimp or a crawfish stew, I'm gonna use seafood stock. I'm using Kitchen Best today that's sold at Rouse's, Nunu's, all the local grocery stores. And I think that one is a little bit lower in sodium. Well, this one is, I'm gonna talk about it. I use this today only for sanitary reasons. It was sealed. I like better than bouillon. Better than bouillon, you'll see that in the stores. This is lobster. You would not think, oh, I'm not putting lobster bouillon in my shrimp stew. You need to. This is a paste. You spoon it, you blend it. These two compared, this one is lower sodium and much bolder flavor. I did this today for the reason that I was coming out in the hot sun. I didn't have to mix that with, but I brought my container so you can see. Now, as you see, all I did was put my four cups of water my four tablespoons of butter comes up. If you're making your roof from scratch, so you're looking at 45 minutes an hour, then you would throw in your fresh vegetables, let that sweat down for 30 to 45 minutes, and then you're adding your seasoning, let that simmer. So we're almost at two hours in a from scratch shrimp stew. Here we have your butter, your stock. Now you're putting in your packet. And you gotta use a whisk. When we toast that flour, it gets fine, fine, fine. If you try and use a spoon to do this, you're just gonna keep pushing flour around your pot. So I like to use a whisk. You gotta whisk it in there real good. Can y'all see that on the screen? See that color? That color is three to four degrees darker than the flour was. When it hits the water, it's gonna go to that chocolate, milk chocolate cover for a good colored stew. 
Like I said, I've got the Cajun seasoning, the roux, and the vegetables all in that one kit. You're using your regular sechu or are you using the dry sechu with the garlic, the dry garlic? Is We're using it? the garlic version in our kit. So you've got garlic in there, you've got your bell pepper, celery, green onion, and your medium grade root. My temperature on my pot, you saw I just turned it on. I don't know if you see that, I'm at about 140, it's already starting to thicken up. What happens with root? When you cook flour, the longer you cook it, the less the thickening agent it becomes. Because of the gluten and the way the molecules work when you're cooking a root. If my roux was a gumbo roux, it would take me more roux to do what I'm doing now. This medium roux, we call for four cups with three measures. Y'all see that stew? That stew's already thick. Basically, you're done. What, we're three minutes into it? I say we're done. Your, your stew's done. Now you're going to add your pound of protein. That's where the stew makes it so versatile. Because like I talked about my mom's meat, my grandma's meatball stew, you can make meatball, chicken, shrimp, crawfish, possum, raccoon, whatever y'all like to eat. The protein, well, I call it just a protein of choice on the label, so that's pretty open. You can do whatever you want. If you're using meatballs, are we going to pre-cook the meatballs before we add it to the stew, or are we I, just... Nope, I just drop them. I make my little meatballs, come so, and I put that in there. Your temperature is already... You add 160 degrees, be hot, hot. That's gonna cook right away. All right, so Shrimp. what's our protein that we're adding today? Today, we are in partnership with Delphine Direct Seafood down in the Vermilion Parish, and we're using their Bay Sweet Shrimp today. We're using a 1620 count. Vermilion Bay Sweet Shrimp. You can see a little package that we have right here. If you're looking to Get purchase there. some of this, Million Bay Sweet Shrimp, you can definitely go to DelphinDirectSeafood.com and uh, LouisianaDirectSeafood.com. There's a lot of other options when it comes to seafood. So if you want shrimp, if you want to throw in some beautiful crab meat, crawfish, make a crawfish stew, you can find all of those products online. Using a whisk and shrimp, that don't do. Mm -mm. You need to switch. After you whisk your, uh, your protein in there, switch up to a spoon. Don't do like me. Because then you get all them little shrimps cut up in your whisk. Now now that you add the shrimp, how long is it going to take to cook the shrimp? Uh, less than 10 minutes. Shrimp are going to cook right away. You're looking for it to curl a little bit. My crawfish don't curl hard. Shrimp, they're going to start to curl a little bit. Uh, they're translucent when you put them in. And I noticed that you lowered your fire just a hair. You don't want it to hard boil. The my opinion is that when you boil your shrimp, boil your seafood, boil any type of protein, it really becomes stuff. So if you allow it to simmer uh, on a low fire, you're going to get more tender. If it's pork, if it's chicken, or shrimp. Y'all, we're less than 10 minutes and we're five minutes away from putting that on rice. It doesn't get any easier. Yep. And now, tell everyone where we can find your say two products. We're at the Farmer's Market in both Lafayette and on Johnson Street every Saturday morning. The first Saturday of each month we're at Delcom in the main parish right there in Erath, or Delcom, should I say. Uh, we sell our Safe 2 Dry Trinity Mix. is in the stores now. We've got that in Rouse's, New News, P.O.'s, Elo's, uh, a lot of the... A lot of your local uh, stores that are supporting local products. Right. Our stew kits are always available online at thisiscajun.com or come see us at the farmer's market on Saturday morning. Uh, Laurel Blackerby is our nutrition and health coordinator for the Delcom Direct, for, oh, I'm sorry, Delcom Farmer's Market. And we see her every month. Laurel assists us as we've established and developed this product. She has been our sounding board. She, uh, she looks at all of the nutritional values and helps us create the nutritional values and verify it. We've had food chemists go through our recipe to help us ensure that we're correct on our nutritional values. Um, Laura is a huge resource for us. She helps write recipes that we put on our website. That seems looking good. What happens as you're cooking it if it gets too thick? Yeah, out of the water. Now see, that's a good point. 
because we've made it to where our quantity of roux will make a thick stew. You can add water to thin it. And I might want to thin it a little bit. But you can't do the other way around. Man, we can't start thin and then make it thicker unless you start adding stuff to it other than water. And that chart starts to change the flavor profile. So what we want to do is, if it's too thick for you, you add your low off. Uh, you can also find the Say To product on LouisianaDirect.com as well as all of the wild caught seafoods. All of the vegetables that were in the kit have rehydrated now. <laughs> Through the hydration dehydration process, we capture all the nutrients. It comes back to life, I call it. Your vegetables come back to life just like you chopped it. So if I go ahead and purchase some of your Say To dried trinity, what, what are some other things that you're hearing other fans incorporating this dry trinity. Can I replace it as a fresh product? How would I do that? Basically, if anything with a broth, it goes straight from the jar. The only thing I've ever found that you can't use this is making an omelet. Because your eggs cook so fast, you got a crunchy omelet. <laughs> so put you a cup of warm water, a couple of tablespoons in your water, scramble your egg, and then when you put your eggs, you can put your softened, rehydrated vegetables into your arms. But anything with a broth, etouffees, gumbos, uh, rice and gravy, soups, ramen noodles, whatever, you can sprinkle that. It's going to rehydrate with all the flavor and all the nutrients back just like it was when it was first chopped out from the new heart. And I know on your website there's a little grinder that you guys offer. I had a lady tell us one time at the farmer's market, oh, I'd love to buy some, but my kid won't eat anything if he can see his vegetables. I'm like, I'd have, I'd have gone to bed hungry. So what we did was we found a grinder that actually fits and screws onto our jars and then it makes it a pepper grinder. So you can make a rub with it and that's available for sale on our website as well. The funny thing about that grinder though, they're not made or sold in the U.S. To find one to fit my cap, I had to look for a 63 millimeter grinder. The only thing they came up with marijuana grinder. <laughs> no, that's not what I'm looking for. Apparently, the 63 millimeter is the go-to size for marijuana. But anyway, we have to South Africa for the grinder, and we bring them in uh, every six months. We get a big order come in. I know you use this at the farmers market. You do most of the shrimp stew at your farmers market. You give out some samples out here. Do you interchange with meatballs sometimes, or we make a, um, we've been doing a shrimp stew the last, I guess, six weeks. Um, they like it. We give out a nice little sample so they can walk away and walk around and talk, taste our stuff. But yeah, the meatball stew, the shrimp stew. Uh, I mentioned our HFA kit. Um, it's just as easy. It's the same thing. It, the ingredients are exactly the same and it's treated the same. You just add your four cups of water, we'll take it from the bottom. The only it's difference a is a blonde root. So you can make your shrimp or a proper shade to play. I say this too because it's more versatile. You can use it for chicken meatball. I said before, you reckon you can use it the other. Too bad they don't do the uh, wild game cook off in New Iberia anymore. Yeah, there you go, some roadkill stew. That's just about done. And you know, I'm going to, like, like in the spirit of Justin Wilson, Justin would always cook and uh, tell a joke. So I'm going to tell a quick joke. Boudreaux and Thibodeau, they, they were sitting around one day and they were talking about, man, I'd love to go fishing. He's like, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, Boudreaux, we ain't got no boat. He goes, man, we could go down to Henderson and McGee's and rent us a boat. That's no problem. All right, we can do that. So they go to McGee's, they get them a 14 foot flat bottom boat and they run up there to the woods in the front. And Shad Bond, you don't you know, right when they start, fish after fish coming in that boat. Them balls was pulling fish up like you couldn't believe. Next thing, Timber, look at Boudreaux. Boudreaux's in the back of the boat, fumbling around. I said, look what you doing. What? He had a can of spray, red spray paint. He goes, man, what you going to do with a rock? He put a big X in the bottom of that boat. He goes, man, what's that for? He goes, man, I'm marking that spot. <laughs> hey, Timber, look at Boudreaux. I said, man, you don't cool y'all yet. Man, what if we don't rent the same boat next time? <laughs> All right, Chef, I think you're ready to serve. Well, I, I have only one concern. I don't think this little pot of stew is going to feed our whole crowd. I've seen on TV. We need some more. All right, perfect. <laughs>